What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. We're continuing with our SEO deep dive series and these are consecutive videos. So if you missed the first video in the series, you're gonna wanna check that one out first, otherwise this one won't make sense. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you a full tutorial for how we complete our keyword research for SEO. It's not that complicated. I'll show you how to do it. Stay tuned. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. All right, my friends, so we are picking up literally right where we left off from our last video. Today, we'll just carry the baton forward and we'll continue to pretend that I'm setting up this coffee shop and you can use the exact same tools as you set up your practice. I'll also show you some live examples for how you can do this for the private practice setting and not just the coffee shop setting. So at this point, if you've done your homework from the last video, then you've collected some keywords, in other words, search phrases from your competitors websites and now you're ready to kind of develop your own keywords make it your own because remember we're not just copying and pasting our competitors keywords we want the keywords that are right on brand for us and our practice so at this point i like to use a tool that once was free but now is incredibly cheap i actually have a video all about this tool already it's called keywords everywhere that's from when it used to be free but let me assure you, the price is completely worth it and oh so cheap. If you're only interested in a paid option, you could use Google Search Console. That's a platform that I'm not as familiar with for whatever reason, I've tried it in so many different ways and I haven't been able to kind of intuitively figure out how to use it. For me, the small fee that comes with keywords everywhere is totally worth it because <laughs> you'll see it's great. So I'll show you real quick. Let's head over to keywordseverywhere.com. I'll link to this website below. So once you go there, you see you have options to install it for Chrome or for Firefox and that there aren't other options. Keywords Everywhere is a browser extension. So you need one of these two browser options in order to run Keywords Everywhere. Now, once you install it, you do need to add some credits to your account. But let me tell you, if we go to the pricing tab, their cheapest option is $10, which is 100,000 credits. So once you have your keywords everywhere set up and you say spent $10 on your 100,000 credits, then we can use the terms we pulled from Neil Patel's SEO analysis from all your competitors' websites. So again, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to pretend I'm setting up this same coffee shop. And I came up with a question from my research before. I saw this keyword coffee shop Campbell and I thought, well, if I'm setting up my coffee shop in downtown San Jose instead of the town of Campbell, is that a search term people are typing in? Coffee shop San Jose. Now that's a great example of how you can take a keyword from somebody else's website and see what comes up if you tweak it a little bit. You wanna find out are people still searching that term? So how do we find out the answer to this question? So glad you asked. So once you've installed keywords everywhere into your browser, you just hop over to the little button with the K and turn it on. So now we can find out the answer to that question. Instead of the phrase coffee shop Campbell, how many searches a month does the phrase coffee shop downtown San Jose get? We're gonna find out, I'll show you how it works. So let's type her in and try not to spell it wrong this time. There's a lot of extra stuff showing up on my screen. So right away we can get some information up here the volume means how many people type this exact phrase into a Google search every month. And this exact phrase gets 170 searches per month. So that's really helpful information to know. There are people hopping onto Google and typing in this keyword that is very relevant to what I do. Now at this point, if you don't wanna overcomplicate things, you could definitely just take this phrase and target that as a keyword on your homepage. But a really well-targeted SEO strategy is gonna take it a bit further than this. And fortunately, everything we need is available through this Keywords Everywhere browser extension. So what I'd like to do is take us over to this data that pops up on the right column. Now you have the option to opt in each time to see if you want to spend the credits that you bought in order to get that data. Now I've done this enough times to tell you that these keywords in this list are not in order of how often they're searched. Let's see if it stays in that order once we load the metrics. 
So we got some things shifted around once we loaded those metrics. So I forgot to mention this section we're looking at is related keywords. And then it expands and it has the people also search for section, which means it might not be quite as related, but you never know, there might be some pretty relevant things in this tab. So what you can do is just go ahead and click on any of these terms in this column and it will take you to the search results for that keyword right away. Now the strategy here isn't to simply find the words that are getting the most search volume every month and simply copying and pasting those to your website. Instead, what we wanna do is find some keywords that are very relevant to what we're doing that are getting a decent search volume, even something like 40 or 100 searches a month, and seeing if there's not too many other websites already out there showing up for that keyword that are like a bigger website than ours. So what I'd like to do now is hop off my pretend coffee shop bandwagon and actually take a look at some search terms that might be relevant to what you're doing in private practice, just so you can see how this plays out. So just out of curiosity, if I use this strategy in my area, how many people are searching anxiety therapist San Jose? Okay, great. This search term gets 20 searches a month, which considering that it's specific to my city is a great term to target. But even with that said, I'm already seeing some terms in the people also search for section that look interesting to me. Therapist in San Jose is maybe a little bit too generic, but there you go, marriage counseling San Jose, 140 searches a month. That's a great search term to target at that search volume. So that brings us to the next piece that I wanna highlight is just because something has a good search volume and it's really relevant to what you're doing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're automatically gonna show up on the first page of search results if you optimize your SEO for that term. Here's why. Some of these terms include a lot of people also targeting those keywords and some of these terms might have not very many people or no one targeting these keywords. And just because I know a little bit about what's going on in my atmosphere in my area, I already know that if we look at, where is it? Uh, Marriage Counseling San Jose, which gets 140 search queries a month. If we click on that, oops, there are tons of people targeting that. So first, yeah, we're gonna get Psychology Today and Yelp show up first, because that's what happens. But here we have Couples Institute Counseling. Okay, we got Good Therapy Directory. Okay, and then we have people who are targeting marriage counseling on their website, and these are people in private practice here. And if we keep going, we'll find that there's a lot of people targeting this keyword, Marriage Counseling San Jose. Of course, it's sprinkled in between kind of different directories. Now, let's say you find a keyword like this one and it feels like, oh, but Marie, Marriage Counseling San Jose is my jam. That sums up what I do so well. I want to target that keyword. Okay, keep the keyword and I'm gonna tell you what to do from there. When this happens, the answer isn't to just throw out the keyword that a bunch of people are already targeting but it may take you some time to build and grow your website before you start showing up in the top search results for that like money keyword. I call that the money keyword. Like I want to show up number one for that one keyword even if I show up for nothing else. It's gonna take you some time to get there. So what you wanna do is find keywords that are more niched, that are getting fewer searches a month, but there are fewer people targeting those keywords. And those more niche keywords are going to become your blog posts. And as you post more blogs that are related to marriage counseling, San Jose, over time your homepage will show up higher and higher in search results for a term like marriage counseling, San Jose. I'll show you what I mean. So let's say you've done your quest and Marriage Counseling San Jose is your money keyword. You wanna show up number one someday for this. From here, we're gonna do some more keyword research. Let's remove San Jose, do a search for Marriage Counseling. Okay, this gets 135,000 searches a month. I'm not saying you wanna target this, but what I wanna do is load the metrics for related keywords and what people also search for. Okay, so marriage counseling near me, marriage counseling Kaiser, etc. What about over here? 
So what we're doing here is we're trying to do some digging to find some more niched keywords that are still absolutely relevant to what you do and your brand. So as I go through the people also search for tab, one that's standing out to me that gets a lot of queries is marriage counseling questions. That sounds interesting. I'm, I'm looking for things that could become a blog post. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that search query. We already know that gets 1900 searches a month. But here we're gonna to start to get more and more niched in these right-hand tabs as we get deeper and deeper. So questions for couple pre-marriage counseling questions. So that has fewer queries, but it's a more specific search term. DIY marriage counseling. Now you might see a term like this and think, oh, that's not what I'm targeting. I am not trying to help people do DIY marriage counseling. With that, that doesn't work out. <laughs> but Interesting, this gets 260 searches a month. So people are typing it in, looking for help. That way people type in DIY marriage counseling, 260 people a month do this. Your blog might pop up first and it says, does DIY marriage counseling actually work? And they're going, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. They click on your blog and Mind you, it better have some really awesome, useful information in there answering that question. I know the answer is no, but like you gotta get into the details of it. But if you have great content on there answering that question, then the person clicking on it is gonna spend a little while reading that blog post and that's gonna tell the Google algorithm, hey, DIY marriage counseling is a great keyword for this blog post. Give it a boost, put it up higher in the search results and if you have tons of blogs that follow this strategy, then over time your homepage that's targeting whatever it was, Couples Counseling San Jose or whatever it was, Marriage Counseling San Jose, eventually you're gonna start showing up for that related broader search term. That might have been really complicated. Okay, I wanna show you what I mean by this. I'm going to show you how this has played out for private practice skills. So I'm gonna turn off keywords everywhere now, put it on pause so I'm not using credits unnecessarily, and I'm going to open an incognito window so it's not showing us results based on my search history. Now, private practice skills, money, keyword, is start a private practice, which turns out a lot of other people are showing up for that keyword. Let me show you how far you have to go before I show up. Okay, well, of course the ads pop up first, directories, all right, we got, of course, yeah, we got some of the big players in the field. They've been doing it way longer than I have. Um, you know, zinny me, practice of the practice. Kudos to you all if you happen to be watching this. Their SEO game is strong. So, okay, we gotta go to page two. <laughs> I think it's super funny that my YouTube videos show up sooner than my website for this, but hey, it's great. Thanks for watching. Uh, okay, we gotta keep going. All right, go to page three. Okay, page three. You can find private practice skills on page three. So I've been building this website for a year and a half and for my target key phrase, start a private practice, you have to go all the way to page three to find me. But private practice skills is actually getting a fair amount of traffic. This is for transparency and accountability. Now let's check out my site kit dashboard and see what we got going on. Here it is, so 80% of all my traffic is showing up from organic searches, which is awesome. So unique visitors from search is referring to how many people are finding me in Google searches. So in the past month, I've had 3,800 different people visit my website as a result of finding it in Google search results. How is that happening when I'm showing up on page three of, for my target keyword? Well, guess what? All my blog posts are so niched that they're popping up as the first, second, third search result for certain search terms that I am definitely targeting. So back to our incognito tab, I will show you an example. I don't remember the exact keyword I targeted, but sample rate increase letter for clients. Is, it there? Is that it? 
Okay, I think I targeted sample rate increase letter to clients in private practice, but even this generic search term sample rate increase letter for clients is still showing up my website as the second search results. So here it is, this is my website. This is my SEO strategy. I haven't even arrived yet, meaning I am not showing up on the first page of search results for my big money search term of start a private practice, though I think I will someday. You just watch out, world. For now, it doesn't matter. My website is thriving. I'm getting about 4,000 visitors a month just from all my blog posts targeting these super niche keywords. Why am I showing you all of this? It's not to brag. I'm wanting to tell you that we can all use the exact same strategy in private practice. So as you do that digging in that right column of the keywords everywhere features, try to find things that are more niched that could become a blog post. And even if that term is something that you disagree with, you can still target that keyword. Like what we were talking about, whatever the term was, like why DIY marriage counseling doesn't work or does DIY marriage counseling work? And then you can say no in the results. And then that way, as those people show up on your website, they might be thinking, yeah, DIY marriage counseling doesn't work. We need some help. I like this person. Let's check out the rest of their website. And they click around. Maybe they reach out to you and that's exactly how you get new clients. That is the primary way that I've gotten referrals in recent times through my private practice website. And that's the primary way people are finding me on private practice skills as well. So at this point, what you wanna do is collect keywords that feel broad enough that you can kind of target on your homepage and more specific ones that you can target in places like specific blog posts. You also wanna think about things like your services pages, like I think I have one targeting anxiety therapist San Jose and then one targeting identity therapist San Jose, things like that. Now what we haven't addressed yet is what do you do with the keywords once you have them? Oh goodness, I'm so glad you asked because that's what we're gonna get to in our next video in this deep dive series because it's one thing to know what keywords you're targeting but it's a whole other item to use them correctly. And let me tell you, there are some really wrong ways to use keywords that could actually ding you on Google search results. So I wanna help you with that in the next video. All right, well hopefully this is making sense to you all and you're finding it helpful. I nerd out on this stuff so i'm enjoying it let me know in the comments if you have any questions or stuck points as of right now and i'll try to get to them in the next video i said that in my last video and actually i'm recording this only like a day or two later after i recorded the last one in this series so uh oopsies i might get to it in the next one if i missed it a special thank you to therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video we're dealing with enough figuring out the whole seo thing but fortunately therapy notes can help you with scheduling notes and billing and now with their new telehealth beta platform you have an all-in-one practice management system where you can also meet with your clients remotely click on the link in the description of this video to get two months to try therapy notes and their telehealth beta platform for free with no commitment and until next time from one therapist to another i wish you well hey excuse me i got this Oh no, oh no, Mary.